I'll be handing over in a second to uh, Ian Fernie after we get through our housekeeping slides. Uh, Ian is e-learning coordinator and head of computing at St. Patrick's College in Ballarat, where he teaches BC software development. I think you had a you had your year twelves just earlier today, didn't you, Ian? Yeah, um, and he's also so fun. <laughs> uh, and Ian is also a member of the LTV's uh, BCE subcommittee. Um, I'll get you to go on to the next slide. Thanks, Ian. Uh, this is something that we like to say at the beginning of all of our VCE uh, type webinars and professional learning workshops. Um, these sessions are collaborative. That is, our goal at, at DLTV is to bring teachers of digital technologies and of VCE applied computing together to learn from each other. So the presenters and facilitators of our sessions are typically just teachers like you. So this is not an official VCAR event. It's not officially endorsed by the VCAR. And you'll probably see a note to that effect on the slide pack that you get. And materials and content are the opinion of the presenters only. Thanks, Ian. There's a link, though, to the official VCAR study design page. Um, last week, the VCAR did run some official uh, webinars to do with the SAT in the Unit 3 and 4 subjects. So uh, you can also access them. Uh, but that's the bit the link there. And uh, yeah probably know that if you're a VC teacher already, hopefully. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ian. Next slide. Um, you may not be aware of some of the community options that are out there for teachers of VC applied computing. Um, so these three, uh, some of them are older than others. Edulist is probably the sort of old of the three, uh, but there are still posts and things that are active on there. There is a Facebook group also for VC applied computing teachers, and there is a Slack group as well. So uh, I'll leave that slide up just for a moment longer in case uh, you do want to access that. All right. Thanks, Ian, if you'd like to take us to the next slide. Uh, just before we uh, wrap up this intro, um, DLTV has two more of these sort of topical uh, Unit 1, 2 style webinars in March. And if you go to our website there, you'll be able to find uh, the upcoming webinars. They're also in our newsletter. Um, the next one is all about Python and doing GUIs in Python, uh, which is one of the ongoing challenges for teachers as Python starts to become more common in the senior years. Um, and the last one is all about the innovative solution uh, project, which is your unit two outcome one project. Um, and then in term four, usually at the beginning of November, we have our annual uh, VC Applied Computing Teachers Conference. And that's the main sort of professional learning event that we do in the year. So please uh, keep an eye on that and uh, you'll probably will be announcing the date and stuff in upcoming newsletters. All right, just one more slide, I think. So this is what we're going to do today. Um, I'll be, as I said, handing over to Ian for the main part of the session. I'll be coming back right at the end uh, to, do, to uh, demonstrate debugging in Python environments, but Ian will be demonstrating mainly with, with BB. So I thought I'd launch one other poll before we start, which is, what programming language do you teach? Um, try and pick the one that you teach the most, I guess. Uh, you may teach multiple ones. If you, if you teach lower years as well as VCE, try and pick the one you do at VCE years. Um, and then um, if you have other, feel free to just put that in the chat. And uh, that way we get to see that. A couple of PHPs, a couple of Visual Basics, Python. I'll give people just a minute longer to respond to that poll. There's one JavaScript there. Somebody does C and C++. I'll leave that poll up for a moment longer as I hand over to Ian to get started. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Nathan. Um, yeah, today's going to be a bit of fun, and we will um, talk about coding, tracing, testing, debugging, um, all of those things um, in in coding um, in in a language for um, for yeah VCE and and some of the other digital technology subjects that that schools might be teaching. I just want to start with something a little bit of fun. Um, here's a little algorithm that I've got up on the screen. There, um, it's uh, it's not necessarily the best bit of code in the world. But I was just um, wondering if people would um, uh, see if they can solve it and see if they could find the output of that um, that little algorithm there and maybe type it in the in the chat. Yeah. 
give you a second or two more and then we'll we'll keep going on there you go we've we've got an answer and it's, oh, and it's correct it's parameters yeah so you know debugging coding is is probably one of the more trickier things for for students to do um it's it's, it's it is challenging uh to be able to write some code and follow a lab sheet and to um to do something that's pre-prepared, you know, they can do that relatively easily. But then when it comes to looking at somebody else's code or when it comes to um, uh, debugging some of their own code or, or, or examples that you've provided them, um, that's a little bit more challenging. So, you know, hopefully people have, have got a bit of an answer to, to how you'd work it out. You know, you'd go through line by line, you'd, you'd see what the, um, the different variables are, you then apply whatever conditions are going on and 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 down the bottom we've got it we've got an output there um you know the output's really important it's um it's it's the result of the algorithm you should be writing what that output is as opposed to you know trues and falses and and anything like that um so that's a good little test um so yeah what's what's wrong with my code i guess is the is the reason why you look at um debugging and and testing strategies and and things and um you know it can be frustrating as i just said for for students and and for everyone involved um you know they can um look at have various techniques to to look through their code and, and solve the problems there are heaps of things um if you've seen the matrix you you would have seen a rubber duck um there um in one of the, one of the trailers and you know maybe it was referencing rubber duck rubber duck debugging um it might be a an interesting thing i was almost going to book list it myself um as i've got there just as a means another means for you know for students to to um look to debug and and another strategy to debug it you know the whole concept of that is is for for students to um to talk through their code to to have a this global vision of of the entire algorithm but then go step by step and 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 look through and and, and try and find it um find the error you know um, hopefully, you know, all the, the techniques that the students have are just not ask the teacher, um, I've got a problem, um, can you solve it? Um, more, more about, you know, going through it systematically, um, using your debugger and using breakpoints in your code to, to try and solve it. Um, maybe some desk checking and test tables, which we'll go through in a little bit as well, um, on, on how to solve the algorithms. Um, maybe and maybe some different ways to produce outputs if the um if the uh if if you're looking at code that or a result like a csv file or an xml file or or something like that that's got lots of output constantly coming through and 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 how that's happening so um you know i try and um try and get students to help debug each um help debug code with each other you know they're asking each other how to solve the problems get them to explain the um the algorithms and and the issues to each other i find that's really useful as well you know that think pair share sort of time to to go through and to to consider the um um what's going on and and how to solve it you know it's collaborative skills it's 21st century skills but it's also you know good coding sort of sort of stuff there as well um so as nathan said we'll go through some various things today um we'll we'll have a look at some of the the ways that um the curriculum sort of a, has has listed um debugging and testing um from from seven to twelve mostly um we'll look at a couple of different errors there and we'll see um we'll see how to go about maybe solving some of those errors um in the in the process and obviously some tracing and and testing and, and maybe some um, um vce sort of exam style sort of questions um we'll put up and, and see how it all links to the the end sort of questions that the students might have to be um asking there um so that is that is difficult to read but that that is the vic curriculum digital technologies um uh you know definition of of of, of what kids are going to learn um, in the creating digital solutions area anyway, um, not the hardware and the, and the data one, but, but the creating one, because that's where we're going to find, um, the, the writing of algorithms and the, um, and the debugging of algorithms in there too. So, you know, about grade five and six, where, you know, ki introducing kids, I guess, to some, some basic algorithms and some flows and some, some ways of solving problems, you know, we're not really, they're not really asking for, um, debugging and testing there too much. 
you know, simple visual programs, um, get them interested and engaged in, in, the, in their IT, probably some block coding kind of scenarios in there. Um, and, you know, a little bit of fun with, with, with it in that space. It's not until it gets to like year seven and eight where, um, you know, we get this predicting outcomes for, for um, input, uh, for given outputs for an input, sorry, and um, and to identify errors in in algorithms where where the skills are sort of looking towards to get to that spot, um, you know, as a result of getting um, getting getting to that spot and finding your errors, you'd probably modify your program, um, review what's been done, and and it's also starting to look at you know some control structures there, some branching and iteration and and stuff. And you know, moving towards your nines and tens, you've got sort of modular programming. It's um, it's getting a little bit more complicated there. We're, we're introducing this term called validation into into algorithms, um, and it and it mentions here um, traces and testing and trace cases and, and stuff. So really, some formalised um, testing processes for for the students to undertake and and really understand um, the algorithms in front of them or the um, the code that they're writing there. Um, along with that, like that, this is the, um, the, the one of the key concepts in the VIC curriculum about algorithms. I just wanted to sort of show where it was, um, where it was going with um, some of the documentation. So, you know, there's, there's developing the algorithms there, computational thinking, um, along with, uh, you know, this, this notion of testing before the final solution and, 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 and going through the process of making sure that it does what it needs to do, that the functional requirements are being met and, um, and the solution is, um, is, is functional to, to what it needed to do in the first place. Um, moving towards some of the, um, the VCE stuff here, we've got the, um, and we'll start with the glossary. The, the glossary is an examinable content, obviously um for for the vce subjects and there's one um um it's a it's not a glossary anymore it's a terms used in the study i should be using the right language there um it's got testing techniques in um in the uh in in the terms there and and we're talking about rigorous testing we're talking about test tables and and recording you know the outputs of tests and, and dealing with it so i've just um taken this little test uh, table out of the um, the Nelson textbook there. Um, just as a bit of an example there of, of how that process works as we, we start unpacking this a little bit. Um, obviously um, looking at looking at where the um, the issues arise with um, with the errors and, and what what the algorithm is not doing and documenting that and and um, and going through that process relatively systematic you know testing tables are not necessarily the thing that kids want to do um very often they, they want to do their code they want to they want to get into the nitty-gritty of building it um but it's a really important process to to um to do the testing to make sure it all does what it needs to do um to formalize that up and and um you you take a lot of learning about algorithms um um, by going through these processes, which is really important when it comes to the exam stuff at the end, as as you'll see when I um, show a couple of questions. Um, in terms of the problem solving methodology, we've got the um, the testing the testing process happening in the in the later end of um, the development stage there. Um, so you know they're 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 embarking on that sort of formal stuff there, but the kids are probably looking to also. Um, do some do some logical tracing of of their testing of their algorithm. Sorry, when they're designing their um, algorithm too, which which probably or oh, some of their algorithms for a SAT anyway, which uh, probably happens in this solution um, design phase as they um as they go into their detailed design designs for their SAT and and start um you know writing a couple of the core algorithms um for that process. Um, you know, obviously not the entire the entire solution gets developed there, but you know the core functionality, a couple of pieces there, is is what I always get the students to do there anyway. Um, um, in terms of the um, uh, study design as well here, um, in the most recent iteration of it, they've put these these little tables at the start of the um, start of the uh, study design indicating where where different parts of the problem solving methodology um, get used in 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 the different outcomes and you know testing's used pretty pretty uh, much through the entire process um, 
you know, possibly, um, you know, unit one's got the programming outcome for, for applied computing. Unit two's got the, um, the, the innovative project there. You know, unit three in software has got some programming stuff in there. Um, you know, there's, there's programming modules. So there's, um, and testing appears in one of the key knowledges. Um, or two. So it's not formal testing, but it's more debugging and stuff. So that's probably why it's not ticked there. But, you know, the students are engaging in that process. And, you know, finally, you've got the end part of your SAT where um, where kids will be doing some more formal testing and, and things in their, in their solutions. Um, there's some stuff about, I'm not going to necessarily go through it too comprehensively, but, you know, unit three, a uh, unit one outcome, outcome two programming. Um, testing and debugging techniques we've got there. Um, very similar sort of statement to the glossary there. Um, bringing in core concepts like um, appropriate test data, which we'll, we'll have a chat about later on, um, and making sure that the data being used in these algorithms is, um, is makes sense for the algorithm. Um, the innovative solution goes a little bit further with the the, the back end of the, the problem solving methodology there and some validation and testing sort of stuff. Um, in it there and you know it's kind of like a mini sat um, for, for year 12 um, and it's a, and it's a good learning experience for them to to, to go through um, that part of the the task and, and then see what year 12's got coming um, okay so um, area study one programming is which people are probably doing at the moment um, introduces a few new concepts there um, you know we introduce the concept of trace tabling in the key knowledge we've got construction construction of test data in there as well um and we get debugging as as well you know some very programming based sort of language and um you know that's that's getting their importance so um this little this little web page there um is is fantastic 101computing.net um although the trace table is more of a desk check um kind of situation rather than a trace table but um you know, it's 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 a good one there. So what I wanted to do is really just sort of click on that, and I've actually got it up in there. Um, and they've got some cool little activities there. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to read, but um, it's got an algorithm at the top, and and it's this sort of interactive kind of little trace table thing. So we can see that you know I gets set to zero. We can see that um. On line two, J gets set to 10. And then we've got a loop through four, five, six, four, five, six. Um, so four, it's still true because I is, is less than J. Um, I becomes one because we've added one to it. Um, taking one away, you get the picture. And then it loops through again. So, you know, being able to do stuff like this, I think is really important because kids, it brings a little bit of interactivity to the, the testing process um, rather than just, um, you know, a, a, on a bit of paper or just talking about it and not really doing it, sort of that engage them in, in the process a little bit more. Um, so what do we got there? We've got, um, that's going to be two, isn't it? And that's going to be eight. And that's not going to be a seven. That's going to be a five again, except uh, what have I done there? Four again. Um, and and that sort of process. So I think that's really, a, you know, a cool little website. They've, they've got bunches of different little algorithms across the, the top. They're more complicated as it goes through. So, you know, without going through all the algorithms um, that are presented there, um, not a bad little website to, um, to review. Um, Right, in, so in SoftDev, in Unit 4 Area Study 2, which is uh, Area Study 1, which is um, going to be the, the back end of the SAT there, um, obviously testing and, and going through the process of making sure that the functional requirements and everything are, are really important um, in, that, in that spot. Um, right, so the nitty gritty of it all, there are a bunch of different errors that, that may come up as, as students and, and newer programming. Um, you know, there's there's some you know common one syntax and logic and, and runtime errors that you'll see um, relatively relatively frequently. You might see some of these other ones a little bit less, um, but we'll just go through and have a look at some of those. So the syntax error is going to be when the um, when the code 
um, doesn't conform to the rules that the language um, has. So every every programming language has a syntax, obviously, um, and and that can be different. As we've got a little um, table up the top there, you know, Python's different than C, etc. And it's really important to um to to make sure that you're conforming to that syntax. Otherwise, the code won't run. Um, you'll in Visual Basic anyway. You'll get um lots of red underlines, you know, and you'll get errors everywhere. And the kids will get you know pretty pretty disengaged with the whole coding process when when they say it starts seeing that many errors. So you know making sure that they're they're well well over the top of the syntax process is 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 pretty important there. Um, you know I've got a couple errors down here with an if statement that doesn't have a um, an end if and a for without an next and and the bottom one of of Put in there that there's um I've created an array but I didn't put um an index integer index value into the um into the the positioning of the array when I was using it so um there's another little error that you get there. Um, another one you've got is um is a logic error, um you know and the exams tend to to look at the logic error sort of stuff pretty heavily, you know your code will compile your your forms will open, um but the the output doesn't doesn't happen as 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 what it should have been um there's some sort of logic in the thinking that's that's not um you know that's not happening there and the um and the code's producing you know outputs that that you don't want so you know this is where your trace table and desk check sort of stuff comes in um that's just a little quick little desk, um trace table sorry off um wikipedia um you know reference the reference the things that you've used um but I just wanted to show the how that you know the you've got the variables across the top, you've got the algorithm um, that you're using, and um, and as you go through the the process, you you see the, the 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 values start getting added in. Unlike the example just before, where we had um more of a trace table, is which um, which you see the lines happening um, on line number one. This is occurring line number two, line number three, etc. Trace tables don't necessarily do that as much. You just um, you you follow down the um, the column there that you've got and um, and put the value of the of the variable as it as it comes out into the program. Um, different way of approaching it. Um, ultimately, you get to the same result there. Um, but I just wanted to bring your attention to the um, um, this cool little website again, and I'll just click back here because I had some really cool. Um, 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 finding logic error kind of processes. So what I liked is that this is a little Python environment um, there. We've got a little test testing process going on here. And and um, it's a process of going through and working out what the what the actual results were. So, um, you know, there's some expected results listed there. So if we ran the little program, um you know we entered in three and then we entered in what's the next value four you know that's four that's the expected result yeah okay um further down and further down the track though if you um i'm going to run it again put in 12 and then put in like four we're expecting to see um 12 is the highest number but it's actually not coming up as that um um, in lieu of time, there, there's you know the reason for that is that we're taking um, string values in the input and um, and um, treating them as numbers and and because it's a string, it's um, it's looking at four is higher than one um, for twelve. So um, that's why that little error comes in. So if, you know we've converted that to an integer, the whole process would hopefully work a little bit better there. And then we get our 12, so we can put 12 in and and and, and the process works all good. Um, you know, I don't necessarily need to show you all of those little ones, but you know, that that's a good little example. It's interactive and embraces the, the testing process um, along with um, getting them to, to use a little bit of code in, 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 a, in a different little environment. So, you know, there's a, there's a scoring one there, which, um, you know, it was doing an order of operations thing. Um, so it was dividing the, the score before it um, added them all up um, and, and those sorts of little little tasks there. So um, 
go for your, go for your laugh on that one. I think it's really um, fun and cool. Um, right. So I was teaching year 12 the other day and we were doing our um, binary search stuff or our searching stuff, including the binary and linear searches. Um, and, and I had a, a, a problem in the algorithm that, that I gave the students um, there. Um, that's part of the algorithm anyway. Um, and it didn't quite work. Um, I, I said the, the error was there um, intentionally for them to find and for them to go through the, the testing process. Um, but the, um, the result of the algorithm, it, it wasn't working. Um, so um, we had to go through a testing testing methodology. It was great. You know, we put it up on the board. We debugged through the, the process and we um, we went looking for the, the errors that occurred. Now, so I had a, an array there in list and that's all the test data that I had in it, um, in, in it populated there. Um, some of the results worked. Some of the values worked when we, when, when we did the um, binary search and some of them didn't. Um, and it was effectively a result of down here in the in the else statement. I was uh, I miss um, type the uh, um, what happens to the middle value when um, if um, if the value that was being searched was greater than the key um, key there. So um, that should have been a plus there. So it threw up the the um, the issue there. So what I thought I'd do was. Um, share and um, have a look at that. Um, cool. You can see that, can't you, Nathan? It's, it's kind of small. It's a bit small. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll zoom in on the code when I get to it. I, I no apologize. worries. Okay. Um, um, all right. So this is our little algorithm for our binary search. And I got the kids to, to put in all the numbers and, and populate the arrays and, and look at the things when I did it. I'm cheating here a little bit and, and putting the values in that I, I had on the on the slide deck there before. Um, and if we went looking for, you know, a number like 26 and did the binary search, it you see nothing's happening. It's erring. It's erring. It's doing a bit of an infinite loop. Um, so... If I go back to the code and I will zoom it in. All right, so we've got a little binary search algorithm there. Um, works by having the data sorted um, and you have a, a low, a high and a middle um, or the middle generated from the, 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 the low and the high values and, and dividing the list in, um, in half every time effectively when, when, you do the, when you do the algorithm. So um, if you haven't put a breakpoint in, into Visual Basic before, um, you hit the little um, little red dot there on the on the side on the column. Kids tend to find that difficult to find. Um, there, um, you can, and that allows you to just start the program, and and the breakpoint pops up when you get to that point. Um, you can force the debugger process by going to the debug menu at the top and going um, um, start debugging, but that'll start it from the very start. Um, that might be okay if you've got a little program and and kids are getting used to that process. Um, if you've got the sort of more complicated, um, um, you know, application that's being developed, um, this whole debugging process is pretty good. So um, I might just start that application. And um, we'll put in our little test of data again and let's search for something. So when it's got to that line of code, I've got a little um, little procedure there for binary search. Um, the button's called that procedure, and and off and running we go. So um, we haven't done a as we haven't done a search yet because um, it's to stop there. So it's um, initialized there to zero. You can see down the bottom here. I've put in a little watch view, a watch menu. Um, if you haven't used that before. Um, really powerful. Um, you can visually check and keep track of your code um, and the values of variables as you as you go through it. Um, doesn't always come up and um, as easily. You need to be in the debugging mode and then you need to go to debug and then you go to Windows and watch. 
So, you know, when the kids close that window, that's a, a difficult one for them to, to find back. Um, it's, it's a little bit harder for them there to do it. So anyway, um, so I've got a little watch window down the bottom there. I've got a break point happening and I'm just going to hit this little step into um, scenario going on. So um, another cool little thing you can do is, is mouse over some of these variables and see what they are. If your watch window wasn't there, um, I tend to do that when, when I'm just trying to keep track of uh, probably a less important um, part of the code. Um, but if I'm looking at something like an array, um, I always like to put it in there because then I can sort of expand that. And you can see that I had an array there of um, add size 10 at the start. So, um, you know, one of those things of visualizing arrays for, for students is um, is a difficult thing at times and, and where the data is being added into. So it's not a bad um, one to put in your watch list there. Uh, so we'll keep going through. We can see our lows and highs get set. We'll start getting into the little loop and we uh, our middle gets set um, there. You, you'll notice that the um, the code doesn't actually execute until the step after that you've um, um, hit on that line. So it's it's the line after when, when some of these variables tend to change. And we'll go through and we get to the important bit. So our key was... Um, 11 we're looking at, at position five in the list so if i was looking down here i'd be looking at position five and would see that that is 15. Um, so the value 15 is um is obviously greater than 11 so we can step in and it'll go into our algorithm and and vice versa so that's that's that process anyway and it's going to just keep looping through and and as before we um we had that error appear so it just went uh, had a bit of an infinite loop thing going because i put a typo in and didn't put a plus for our binary search so i'll quickly run that again and then we'll, we'll keep going um there's a data we'll search for something we know didn't work the first time was five and fingers crossed i i forgot to take the debugger breakpoint off there that's fine. You can either click it off there and hit continue, or you can just hit continue. Um, this part of the algorithm there is not in a loop, so it would have just run through. And we found it at position five, and I've got a count there, and and it's highlighted it for us too. So that's what the um, what the little application did. Okay, I might jump back to this one one of the things i always find interesting when you're working with students in the classroom and they're doing code and this is true whether it's you know scratch or python or javascript or whatever it is is um they'll often say i i can't find it. i don't know what's wrong and 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 myself or the you know the teacher i'll come up and i'll go oh it's it's that and i'll go how did you see it straight away you know and it's, it's often just having a different pair of eyes looking at it but also the more you do coding the more you kind of develop a sense for where the where the mistakes are probably happening um and so it's to some extent it's it's a it's a bit of a skill that you learn um over time the more you program but also there's definitely skills that that are that are useful for the kids to be learning directly to kind of so that they can i don't know fast forward that process a little bit and not wander through and take a long time to to pick up those skills all right um a runtime error um here's a little oh, i probably could have left that on because i've got another example in a minute um a runtime error will be you know similar sort of th situation to a, a logic error the the code is will compile properly but the the error will um will pop out when um when the code is running um so you know it could be a situation where you've got an array and you've defined that array and here i've got an example and i've got an array of 10 of 10 from so zero to 10 because the race started at zero and then we tried to add in something at position 11 and it and it all fell over because the array size wasn't big enough um you could have read in the array you could have um um resized it dynamically um in the program when that was happening you could do a whole lot of things but the reality is in this situation um you know the, the array size is too small for the for the data and the thing crashes um if you if you have um an integer value that is um, 
that is above or below those two values, uh, particularly in C anyway, um, you, the program tends to crash as well. Um, and you might introduce some, um, you know, some existence type and range sort of checking errors um, at run times too. You know, they, they sort of, it's a logic thing. It's also sort of a runtime thing, you know, where you put it um, uh, is totally up to you, but, but that's, um, that's possibly another situation as well. Um, this is a little app that I had, which um, you can see that, I've, and I'll demo it in a sec, um, just hopefully so you can see it. I've got a, a CSV file um, with a bunch of cricket players in there. Um, I've obviously got a set of data that is is longer than our um, uh, 10 array size or 11 because it goes from 0 to 11. Um, the numbering's a little bit off there um, because of the line numbering, which is an off by one sort of situation later on down the track. Um, when, when, the, when the program runs and hits that particular point, um, of an array where it's trying to put in the um, the, the the eleventh bit of data um, or beyond, um, it will um, it will throw up an error, and you'll see that you'll get this index out of range range issue because of our of our thing. The other little one before I run it um, might be in a runtime error. This is a sort of a validation thing. So in this program, I had a um, I put in an existence check in there. Um, the kids found this one too the other day on me. Um, I, I, you know, the primary objective for me in this this particular lab sheet was to um, to go through CSV files and um, and text files and importing stuff in. Uh, I wasn't necessarily do it talking too much about the validation, but um, they found this, which is good. They're, they're testing my code. They're, they're going through and and looking how it breaks, um, and they get a lot of excitement out of that. Um, so then we went when we went back and we um, looked to try and fix some of this sort of stuff. Where um, if you put a um, um, if you typed in though, um, text into the runs in the balls field for how many runs they scored um, over how many balls, um, it would break. Um, we could do a range sort of base thing as well if you wanted to. I don't know how you'd necessarily do that. You know, you might be checking if it's zero or not, or negative one or not in some of those situations, depending on how um, how much cricket you want to detail you want to go into. Um, so I might just quickly show you that because there's some good debugging things in there. Okay, and we'll have a look at our Cricut app. So the Cricut app here is um, what it's doing. Um, so you can sort of see it happening before we um, we break it a little bit. Um, it's the 1989 Ashes. Um, I was allowing the students to select between Australia and England. And when that happens, it reads in a bunch of player data. Um, it reads in both teams actually, and and it. But it, the there's a there's an if statement in there that only selects the players who um who play for Australia if you've got Australia or if it's England who's England. And then you know try and give them some other visual kind of interesting things, ideas for when they progress into their own programming later on down the track with with um, sats and things. Um, you know graph it, visualize it in some different ways, just not a, you know, a text box sort of output, but, um, you know, some, something creative and a little bit of fun. Um, so that's the application and it works at the minute because I got rid of the, um, the number of uh, things in the, um, in the CSV file. So that is hard to read. It's hard for me to read. Um, that's the data that I had there, but if I went into, and I just copied this, prepared it earlier, We'll copy that and move it into this one. And hopefully you'll see that we break it. The code executes when that happens. And there's the error. So the data sort of sort of loads up when, when you select a team for the first time. And there's our error and we can um, immediately just looking at it without without actually pushing it through the debugger. Um, it's not necessarily a hard one to see. Um, we can see the value of X is 11. Um, there we could have a look at this um, this sort of other output window. I think things come up, indexes outside the bounds of the array. It's telling you things um, that, that, that you should be saying to students anyway about how these um, processes work. Um, how I go about, you know, debugging that, I'll 
obviously probably want to change our size there. Um, find a quickly, quick replace. Find 10. You see that I did this backwards just before. Um, and replace all. So now our code probably should work. But it's good to, for kids to see these errors as well. Um, I find anyway that when they've seen these sorts of things, they're not necessarily um, so freaked out about the error that popped up. That that when you when you show them this is the error, this is what happens when this situation occurs. Um, and then when they get that, they're not going, I don't know. It's like, oh, I've seen this sort of thing before, or I was told that this might happen, and that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so you know that. That process there also also helps the, the students there. We can see that we've got plenty more data in there to, to choose from. And Ian, it makes me think of like a maths teacher when you know you make a mistake when you're, you're demonstrating a solution on the board. Yeah. And it's and and then it's it's good. It's a learning moment. It's like yes, the teacher makes mistakes as well, and you know like yeah. this is a strategy we're using. It's not just a perfect solution. Um, yeah. And then you go through and explain. <laughs> Yeah, and you know it is 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 important to to not be necessarily perfect in these in these um, environments and to and to to work through the problems and to understand why they occur is um you know when it comes down to it that's nitty gritty um, logic based sort of fun stuff that coding 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 has um, yeah so you know I was going to on the read of the CSV put a little breakpoint in there and and then. Um, um, play that code. Bring that up and and let's watch the um, the array which was called. I had a bunch of different arrays in this one. We hadn't quite got to um, uh, records yet, or I didn't want to show them the whole um, connectivity between putting a, a record into an array. What have I done there? SGR player, PLA one here. That was the name of the thing, wasn't it? SGR player name, yeah. There we go. Um, so yeah, we can see that it's size 50 and and you probably can't see, but um, you'll have to trust me if I scroll that down, that that, that becomes um, size 50 there. So, you know, another visualization of, of that kind of process um, for the kids. So back to the little bit of code. Where was that break point? There. So we could step into it, see the data start appearing in the in the different bits of data as we go through. So, you know, it's broken up into just the names in this one. So it starts popping through. Um, anyway, there are some other strategies and I wanted to show you some stuff with the um, um, adding, adding things to. So this is a validation issue that I had going on here um, um, with, with the data going into the application. Um, so I, I tested um, the existence check of, of some of these things. Um, so the form, if you didn't quite see it just before, had had name, teams, runs, balls, so, and then you added it in. Um, so I did some validation for, uh, make sure there's a name in there um, before it stopped, make sure that, that there was some runs in there. Um, before or something in the runs um, text field, I should say, and the same with the balls one there. Um, we could go a little bit more extreme with some of these, and you know, if um, if we wanted to make sure that that runs was a number, um, we might want to do a an extra little bit of an if statement happening. To if is numeric. Uh, text it runs to text. Equals true. Then um, 
then proceed to to the next bit. You, um, we probably want to go as false to be honest, uh, because if it does equal true, we might put in a bit of this sort of stuff. Txt runs. Um, txt runs. And what am I missing? And else there. And move that end if. All right. So if we run that little program again, we'll need to select a team. Then we can put in, you know, Freddy. Um, from Australia. Hundred. And we should invoke by our validation sort of debugging process. Um, so text to name dot text did contain something, contain Freddy, so that's a good little process to do. Um, if it did, um, so we can move forward runs did contain something um so we can move forward um but then we will see that it starts breaking here because we've got a um an integer string sort of situation um going on so you know those sorts of things are really fun um cool um, and we've done a bit of demoing of, of this sort of stuff too, so I won't necessarily show the, the live view of it, but um, this was an example of what I did for um, a, a SAC module a little while ago. Um, uh, it was me actually testing what was going on and what I wanted it to do, um, as opposed to the final version that, that students got. And and another one when dealing with, so in this situation, you searched for, you did a binary search, I guess, um, for, for a product, um, you you then found the details of that product. You added that product to a shopping cart. Um, you're able to, able to add in multiple products to it, apply a discount code, uh, those sorts of things, and it would automatically generate it up. Um, these two little list boxes um, keep refreshing every time a, a product gets added. Um, and there's a little little problem here with, with some counts because um, list boxes um, like arrays start at zero. Um, so when you iterate through those things, um, you've got to remember that there's a zero position. But because the, um, the, the issue was that I've got a dynamic sort of number of things in that I might put in my shopping cart um, for this situation, the items count value was going to be always one off the, um, the actual, you know, the, the count from zero to um, how many you've got. So um, I need to resolve that one. You know, that's usually a, a good one to, to sort of throw up at kids, um, sort of that logic of, of things. So, you know, taking one away from that process um, and, and going through it again. Um, another error that comes up, uh, you know, all the time, um, especially when you're working with sets of data and arrays and lists and, and, and bits and pieces. Um, type conversion um, might be an error there. I'll just quickly flick through these. Um, so obviously you, you run into issues when you um, convert uh, a string to an integer, an integer to a string. Um, although in this little example here, I tried to break some code um, by putting a bunch of strings into an array um, and then do some maths on them. And it actually worked. Um, it's the other way when, you, when you're dealing with it, like the, um, the 200 and, and stuff that, that's more of a, a problematic sort of thing um, there. Um, later on down, down here, I've got a bit of a calculation where I'm dividing integers um, and working at GST and, and stuff. Um, all these variables are set to, to integers instead of doubles or floating point numbers. So, um, so it strips the values off um, when, when that sort of thing occurs. So, um, you know, talking about data types right back at the start of the year is, um, uh, becomes really important and, and what the data looks like and what you're expecting to see is, I guess, the the, the valuable bit there, um, you know, because sometimes those those decimal point values um, are important, especially when it comes to money and and, and other things. Um, 
You might run into various um, types of memory leaks and handle leaks um, in, in code. You know, it might be when you are opening up a file and then you try and reopen the same file and, and, um, and the file doesn't open because it's already open or you didn't close it the last time you used it. Those sorts of things can, can, um, can be issues. You know, memory leaks, um, you know, you're not freeing up resources um, and, and things like that and, and not writing it. In that CSV um, application I had before, I was writing CSV values. Um, but what I didn't do was um, um, uh, clear the clear the buffer and, and stuff there and, and, and write it and, and things. So, you know, that's more of a buffer leak, I guess. But anyway, um, files and working with files. You might have two processes that are that are colliding and and waiting for each other to finish in terms of a deadlock. Um, test data really really important um, important to to have properly sort of set up testing values there. Um, you might want to test some valid and invalid data. Um, the boundary plus either side of the boundary some incorrect and and correct things. You might want to. Um, test sort of the different values within a loop too and and where the loop starts and where it ends and and just off that and and, and stuff so so test data is really important um there's a little little question that i've got um presented there um so you know if you're playing footy and um under 18s football and wanting to see if you um were eligible enough to to play it and i just made up some numbers there so you had to be greater than or equal to 16 and less than or equal to 18. what what types of um different you know testing boundaries would you would you look at well you want to have a look at 16 you want to have a look at outside of that so 15 um, the same with the other end so 18 and 19 and then if you have the option something in the middle just to test that it works um right what i wanted to show was some um, exam questions and i've just grabbed sort of examiner reports and, and put some stuff in here as well um, so that was a boundary exam question, similar to what I just did. Um, you know, most kids were able to um, answer those these things um, um, reasonably well, which is which is really positive. Um, you know, that sort of stuff's being, I guess, taught really, really well. Um, and when presented in a situation like that, that the kids are uh, are able to identify those things, fantastic. Um, similar sorts of of things here. Um, you know, when we've got. Uh, we're looking for what type of validation check we're going. Kids are knowing that, you know, um, what those are and, you know, they should be testing correct and incorrect data. So, you know, good, two good questions on, on that validation sort of thing. Good test, good, good logical, good debugging sorts of thing, you know, things that they do all the time. Um, we've had a bit of a look at a test table, so I might just skip through that. Um, it's important though because um, here's a couple of exam questions on testing and test tables. Um, and if you've had a look at the 2020 and 2021 exams, as this appears, um, there's a bit of an algorithm there, not the most um, easily read thing in the world. Um, and it presents a, a common sort of test table where you've got, you need to put in some test data, um, what you, what you, expect it to happen and what actually happens in the algorithm and things. I guess kids got a little bit confused with this question because of the notion of current time and working backwards. Um, you know, there's, there's, if something was in a fridge um, and, and taken out of that fridge four hours earlier, um, we're, we're dealing with, with time and backwards time and, and we're talking 24 hour clocks and, and things there as well. Um, so, you know, there's a bit of, com, um, a bit of confusion there with those sorts of things. Um, the reality is what, we, what we're trying to identify is, is, you know, the output here, which is, which is interesting how they've done it in this particular question, but because, you know, it's true there, or is it, or is it false? You know, um, what, what was the, what was the output of, of the thing where it's, you know, it's usually the, the, the text or the output that, that appears rather than sort of, does it get into the statement and things um, a little bit more, but so now that could have thrown them um, a little bit as well. Um, so, you know, there's, um, there's no real escaping how poorly answered that sort of question was, um, with, um, you know, the average of, of that being, um, you know, pretty, pretty low there, um, with most kids not sort of attempting it. And, um, 
and and some giving it a bit of a shot and it's kind of knowing where where some things were. Um, that's sad a little bit. I feel in in software development where you know kids are looking at code and debugging code and and looking how it works and and it really shows that they they struggle with this process, um, especially when it's not theirs and and how they think and how they they approach it. Um, you know, there's a few tricks in, the, in in this particular one that made it made it difficult. Um, and and also introducing sort of your ors and and errors and, and things also makes it difficult because if you know something's not working um, and you've got to try and work out how it works, um, it obviously is a little bit problematic and, and difficult. Um, similar sort of question last year's exam. Now I haven't sort of put elements there of, of marking and stuff because the assessors report and things aren't up, um, but you can see the similarities between one question and the next question. Um, here and and you know you've got some values there and some some expected results and actual results and um you know we're looking at current date and current time and 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 um current date and appointment date and appointment time and current time and and, and so forth so you know similar type of question um this one's got more of a more of more of a, an output that is um <laughs> more commonly seen i guess with the returns the return output thing being either appointment created or invalid or invalid sort of sort of thing so you know that's usually what kind of you see um if you look back through some exams um you know it'd be really interesting to see some percentages and and stuff and how kids um were able to approach this question particularly after the one in in 2020. um we've done a little bit of trace tables already um um showing how how that process kind of works i just wanted to quickly show a, a trace table again with um with um, and a desk check on which is on the next slide um and how the process sort of works so we're initializing all the, the zeros there um all the different variables so you've got the variables across the top the values that are occurring there you know we've got a loop here we're inputting a number so we're inputting two total becomes total plus number so which is two um and it's the first time through the loop so we've got a one um then we keep going through so we inputted the value three um you know total is total plus number so it's already two two plus three is five second count um number totaling up and um and and the the three count which um exits the loop and and displays stuff so you know um that as opposed to sort of more of the the other sort of line by line kind of identifying thing um um, you know, it's important for, I guess, kids to see that because that's the, the terminology that's in the study design and that's what they expect to kind of see. Um, whereas more of a desk check kind of version of things might, you know, have the line numbers and, and the variables sort of appearing um, based off where those, um, where those things are, are occurring as opposed to sort of, you know, directly after one another and, and things. So I often do this because I like to, to get the kids to, to, um, to iterate through their code, to to consider the loops, look at the values of the variables at the particular lines. It links back into Visual Basic really nice when um when you see line numbers down the side and and stuff. So you know trying to get them to to think through that process like that. But you know I recognise that that it is not the term used in the current study design as well. Um, you know, and then you get sort of you know some questions like this in in the last um. In, in the in in the 2020 exam I just did a bit of a desk check version of stuff and a, and a trace table version of stuff there and and there's some examiner comments and, and marks and percentages and stuff so you know it's it's a relatively simple question that one um, you expect the results to be to pre be pretty high and it is multiple choice so you know they are looking for particular things time consuming question though um, you know, it's it's something that you don't want to panic over when you're when you're doing the doing the exam and and, and that sort of thing for the kids anyway. Um, similar sorts of you know questions in in the more recent exam there with um you know more complicated crazy looking um, sort of question there. But when you sort of start looking at the options and looking at the lines there, you you can sort of work out what's um what's happening there a little bit more. So, um, you know, exam technique and, and, and processes of tackling some of these questions are um, a little bit different to how you do it, I guess, when you're writing your own. Um, but, you know, valuable nonetheless. Um, and 
Oh, hey, I, th I, I think that's, that's Nathan. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to give two quick demonstrations for people that use Python. And I'm using the first demonstration, I'm using probably the simplest environment that you can with Python, which is Thony. Um, Thony is like the, you know, the beginner's Python environment, and it's also the one that's on the Raspberry Pi. Um, what I've done is I've done a little program here. By looking at the codes, you might be able to work out what it's intended to do. Uh, we have teams that are playing some kind of, I guess, uh, game, and the teams have won this much money, and these are the sizes of the team. So this team had 10 people in it. This team just had four people in it. And our program basically figures out how much money each player gets by averaging. So, well, by take, by dividing. So 195 by 10 gives you the money for the first team. And it does that for each of the teams. Then it does some tax calculations, calculates the GST. And then finally, it, uh, it displays what each person should be getting in each team and, and uh, how much tax they pay. Now, if I was to just run this in front of you with the run button, it crashes at line 11 um, and it's like what's the error that's the first thing I, I would ask the kids well let's read what what's the error it's giving you it's not always helpful but quite often it is so what error is it actually giving me the error is division by zero some of you may have already seen what my problem is in my code um, but it's happening on line 11. now Thony is not as uh, complex as Visual Studio, but you can still put in breakpoints. So if I double click, you see how I get the little red dot. So just like in Visual Studio, you can create a great a breakpoint. So if I run this with debug, which is the little bug here, and now it ran through and stopped for the first time it hit this breakpoint. So just like in, in the demo that Ian was doing, um, we've hit this breakpoint and we, can, we can't mouse over and see what the values are, but at least we know where we are. And then if I step through, I can even step inside and see the insides. There's the values. Uh, I'm just stepping into here so you can see what things are. And I is zero. So that value works out to 10. So 195 divided by 10, that's fine. So that one works, 19.5, it sticks that onto another array. And we're done. So that's the first iteration of that loop. And now we get to the next one. And so I'm going to step over this time. It's iteration two, iteration three, iteration four. And this is actually where our problem happens. So if I step into this one, there's the, uh, the winnings. Okay. And it's number four, which means it's 183. It's this one. All right. That's good. Next one, team sizes, it's number four, which is zero. What's 183 divided by zero? Divide by zero error. And that's where the problem is happening. So if I keep going now, of course, that's where it crashed. So that procedure of stepping through using the breakpoint allowed me to identify where it went wrong. Um, the issue, of course, is that I can't divide by zero. So there's a problem with my team size. So I'm just gonna fix that by changing it to four just to see if that fixes the problem. And I'm going to run again now. So I've got another error. There are two errors in this. What's the error this time? Once again, let's actually look. What does the error say? List index out of range. So this time something else has happened. It's trying to access in one of these lists, or one of these arrays, um, an, an index that doesn't exist. And again, the debug process here uh, I could do a breakpoint again and I could step through. In this case, what's actually wrong is those of you who've been looking would probably figure out this list is actually longer than this list. It's got more elements in it. So because it's using the length of the first list, when it tries to go through and access another element at the end of this list, it's out of range and it's not able to get it. So I would need to have another, another element in that list for it to work. And there you go. Now it works. It actually works everything out and gives me the answer I want. So that that's sort of an example of using Thony. Thony is not doesn't give you quite as much, but you can do breakpoints and you can see what values are as you step in with your code. So it sort of does half of what you need. Just to show you one other example here. Uh, the other example I'm going to show you is in the REPL online environment for Python. 
The other environment I, I sort of had prepared, but we don't have time, was PyCharm. I'm not sure if anyone uses PyCharm, which is probably the most the biggest sort of Python environment. Um, but this is this is what REPL looks like, and this is an example from uh, actually DLTV's um, VC kit. Um, it's quite a big program because I wanted to show you that we need to be able to find something that's you know in the middle of of a big bit of code. Okay, but the idea here is we're reading in data. And it's data to do with textbooks that people are selling. There's a header line there. This is a CSV file. And then that's the name of the textbook, the subject, the seller, the purchaser, and so on, all in that CSV file. So it's reading that in, and then it's allowing us to request and make a change. So if I run this one, it says, let's find your entry. Enter the textbook name. Well, I'll pick one that I know is in here. So I'll go with urban combat. Enter your full name. So this is meant to be the purchaser. So I'm going to put in this person's name on your corner. And it says, sorry, there was no match. So clearly something's wrong here. It should have had a match. Why wasn't it matching? And if I wanted to debug in REPL, the same familiar things are all there, but you might think, where is it? Where are the breakpoints and things? Well, I can click to put in breakpoints, but if I click here, then I get all my debugging options, all right? So we've got play and we can do breakpoints and we can look for things and so on. So we could go through, we know it's reading the file okay, but we could say, all right, let, let's see if we can find this matching entry and we could see what the input is and see if it works. So I might put a breakpoint in my function here, like say here, there it goes. And then if I press play here, just like in the other environments we've shown you, you get that same behavior where it pauses there. Obviously I have to type something in first. So I'll do the same thing, urban combat on your corner. Okay, and as you can see, it's starting to display some useful stuff for me here. Uh, so we've got entry.gettextbook. Okay, so we've got the list to search. And there's all the things. So I can see here that it has read it incorrectly. There's the purchaser, Tornio Borna. Uh, if I was able to scroll across, I would also see the other one there. So that's all correct. It's all in there. So what's actually wrong? As it turns out, the error in this one is that I'm looking for the subject. I should be looking for the purchaser. But that, that's just another example where you can still use breakpoints. You can still get it to stop at the relevant place and find the things that you need. No matter what environment you're using, they almost all have this ability. So I'll I'll wrap up my demonstration there, but happy to chat to anyone afterwards if they wanted to know a bit more about how to do that stuff in Python. Um, so yeah, that's that's the end of today. So uh, I'd just like to thank Ian for his time as well today. Uh, thanks Ian for presenting and uh, thank you to those people who've stuck around to the very end. <laughs>